Um, so, if I could remember that T.S. Eliot poem about time past and time future, I'd recite it now and dazzle you with my powers of memory, but of course I can't, unless I take out my phone and I Google it. Uh, and, that, and the poem would come down somewhere from the cloud, um, and, and then you'd be really impressed by my intelligence. Instead, I can't do that, uh, but I will remain, remind you that our present tense here is about to become the past, and very, very soon, you will all move on to your next futures. Um, and as we have, uh, as we have a, a, a short set change for the very last um, contribution to the forum, um, I'd like to join you, I'd like you to join us in thanking the following extremely important um, people that have made uh, what we've just experienced uh, the last three days and also back in, in January possible. Um, Art Dubai and the Global Art Forum is presented by the Dubai Culture and Arts Authority, Dubai Culture, and it's supported by Dubai Des Design District, D3. The British Council has kindly supported the appearance of UK-based speakers at this edition of the forum, and the Financial Times is the international media partner of the Global Art Forum in 2016. So I'm going to very quickly, as quickly as possible, go through uh, uh, categories of people who have been very, very important um, in making this all happen. Uh, and at the end of each uh, roll call, uh, if I could ask you to join me in uh, thanking them, I'd be very appreciative. So we've had amazing volunteers who've been running around um, inside, outside the tent, island, land, uh, making every little thing work perfectly. They are Samar Yasin, Veronica Smirnova, Jasmine Mazin, Ria Ummen, amazing name, uh, and Mega Tony. Uh, thank you very, very much to all of you volunteers. Uh, we've not been able to see them, but behind that black wall, I believe, we have had incredible translators who have worked non-stop tirelessly, and now they'll be translating me talking about them, and I wonder how that feels. But we are very, very, very grateful to the incredible efforts of Shakir Hassan, Fatan, and Anil Kumar. Thank you very, very much. Um, some of you have heard me speak before, may have heard this before, but I can never tire of um, uh, retelling this story. There's a thing called the Singularity University. Um, it was taking place in NASA. Really, the brightest uh, engineers, uh, astrophysicists, scientists has all gathered there. We are talking serious IQ firepower. And then the very first speaker got up to a lectern like this and pressed the, uh, the arrow key to cue his first slide on PowerPoint, and it didn't work. Uh, and he then said, AI is easy, AV is a nightmare. <laughs> um, no matter how far we move into the future, that continues to remain to be the case. Um, we had some problems on day one, but we got through them. We've had an amazing team um, who've made us sound and look as good, I hope, as we really are. So thank you to Tom Clements, to Gino Welburn, to James Billany, Lloyd Joseph, Marcus Toledo, Obit Corillo, JR, and Sean Ali. Thank you very, very much. Um, from Jumeirah, our host, uh, Swalela Subrati, and for delivering us this incredible tent which feels like it has come from the future. It's the first time I've been in an obdurate black tent that's white on the outside. It's quite amazing. Paul Wyborn, Marilyn Fernandez, Ross Hunt, thank you very, very much. Okay, I'm getting towards the end, and uh, as I do so, some of the very, very important people. Um, none of this would have happened without three people who've been the core team. They are Uns Katan, Sali Al Ahmed, and Rujan Rizik. Um, thank you so, so much. 
And then to my um, amazing, um, amazing co-directors, um, Uzma Rizvi and Amal Khalaf have, um, have great, graced us with their intellects, their imaginations, their spirit of inquiry, and most importantly, I think a spirit of, of care that they've shown to this thing called the Global Art Forum that we've all nurtured together over these years. Um, thank you so much. It was my Anamal. And lastly, my, um, our infinite thanks to our guests, our collaborators, our muses. We do the forum to feel smarter and to feel more alive through the aliveness of ideas. Thank you so much for sharing uh, your work, your ideas, uh, your thoughts and your opinions. Um, thank you very, very much. And so, um, Amal, will now Amal will now take us one step closer to the end of The Future Was. So please uh, welcome Amal Kala. Thank you so much, Amal. Um, and our uh, eagerly awaited final presentation um, tonight is called The Future Was Dichro uh, Dichroic. Um, it features a performance by the always brilliant artist Manira El Qadiri as she takes us on a time traveling journey through a color, the color of polycarbonates. For those of you who don't already know Manira El Qadiri's work, um, it explores the relationship between narcissism and masculinity, as well as other dysfunctional gender roles. <laughs> and she's currently expanding her practice towards the political. She's a fellow member of Artist Collective, GCC, and is currently a resident at Rijks Academy in Amsterdam. For those of you who are residents of Dubai, you may have been lucky enough to come across an enigmatic, giant, iridescent sculpture of an oil drill installed amongst the reconstructed purling boats in Shindaga Heritage Village as part of a public art commission last year. This work, called Alien Technology, is one of the works in a series exploring her personal and in turn also the Gulf's complex dystopian relationship to oil. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Munira El Qadiri. Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about the color of polycarbonates. Act one, the singer. My grandfather was a singer on a pearl diving boat. I imagine he sang things like this. An Australian explorer once referred to him as a mustachioed ruffian with fierce eyes whose moaning, raspy voice was an affront to the ears of mortal men, and that his fellow sea companions made a strange kind of low, throaty, growling sound, like the distant rumbling of a squadron of bombing airplanes. I'm guessing Alan from Australia really didn't understand the music. This is the captain of the boat whom my grandfather once worked with, speaking about an incident when he was lost at sea. Stop. 
خلاص بدات الخميس بلشت في قبل لا تطلع الشمس بلشت الطير وصلحته صلحته كنت غطيتها بالماء قبل ما غطيتها بالماء كان ابو اكل منه شويه شفتها طعم ماشي وياي كان اكل اتت الطير قطيت قطيت العظام ما قدرت اكل العظام طماع قلت بعد هذا اذا اتت له باكله وغدا اخر This rustic, primitive life on the coastal gulf of utter dependence on the sea and living on boats for sometimes six months of the year to hunt for pearls in the ocean now feels so distant, so ghostly, almost like a fiction, a fiction that someone dreamt up in a government PR agency. <laughs> the powers that be always attempt to show us our traditional music, the clothes, the way we lived, dioramas of old city life, animated by wax figurines and Disney-esque heritage villages. The pearl here is meant to be a representation of who we are, the heart of a nation, the cultural identity of our very soul. Sitting in this freezing air-conditioned concrete existence, it is not just difficult to imagine or accept that idea, but actually impossible. The main reason behind this disappearance of a culture in its entirety is that an intruder came here and wiped it all away, like a fragile dust cloud evaporating on hot asphalt. The name of that intruder is oil. Oil is the excrement of the devil. El excremento del diablo. Oil is black blood. Oil is the blood of the dinosaurs. This is the bloodstream of the world economy. The past was effectively erased. There's one missing, okay. <laughs> uh, But in the ancient Arab tradition, the past is a very important element of contemporary life. It is not a proponent for nostalgia or remembrance. It is alive in the here and now. It is the present. In the words of my favorite Japanese Islamic scholar, Toshihiko Izutsu, to the Arabs, the past is the most sacred present. My name is Mnira Muhammad Isa Ali Yusuf Al-Qadiri. The sequence of names of fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers is meant to be a testament to the living past and the present. So I wondered, is there a way to reconcile with the past somehow, to revive it from its slumber and re-articulate its existence in the present and the future, albeit in a disfigured, irregular form? Despite the huge rupture in history caused by oil, this freak petroleum interval will be spoken about in future as a mythical enterprise and future generations will attempt to create some kind of cultural continuity with what preceded oil long after it has become worthless. In order for this to happen, we must give oil some cultural importance, an iconic status that matches the pearl itself. <coughs> I missed something here. So oil came to us like an alien from outer space. We touched the black alien slab that is oil and never went back. Our lives, our minds, our bodies, our whole reality transformed and all connections with the past were lost. We became modern man, modernity here being understood as a psychosomatic condition violently arising because of random accidents and events, oil being a random bounty in itself. Indeed, in the same way as oil, pearls are also fundamentally intruders. They are formed inside an oyster after bacteria or sand has entered the shell, and the oyster wants to protect itself from this unwanted visitor. So pearls are, in fact, aliens in themselves. The 
The title of this talk is inspired by the Armenian director, Sergei Panarjana's film, The Color of Pomegranates. The pomegranate being the traditional national symbol of Armenia, post-Soviet industrialization, and represents the loss of a sense of home. Through this fruit, Parajanov intended to reveal the culture of the three peoples of Transcaucasia that was being wiped out. Symbols like the pomegranate, more than representing real traditional customs, provide an example of the invention of tradition, an example of creating an alternative, uncorrupted, symbolic universe. After the domination of pearls, our symbolic universe should be represented by none other than the oil drill. The oil drill, a beautiful octopus-like creature covered in golden diamonds, drilling through the earth to discover and seek out oil. Here, it mimics the figure of the pearl diver as it dives into the sand looking for that hidden treasure. Whether it breaks the surface of the earth or the surface of the water, the process of excavation remains the same. Whether the excavator is machine or man, poised in a perpetually optimistic downward spiral, searching for the thing that will bring untold utopian riches. They are, in essence, both diving. This is a map of oil and gas fields. As you can see, the fields are very much concentrated in the vicinity of the sea in the Gulf. This is a close-up. The red ones are gas and the black ones are oil. Now, this is the location of massive pearl beds. Is it a coincidence that these treasures are concentrated in the same place? There must be some kind of magical connection there that we haven't uncovered yet. But wait, I think I see it now. This is a puddle of oil spilled on the side of the road. These are some pearls. Oil. Pearls. Oil. Pearl. Oil. Pearls. They have the same color. This is it. This is the magic color, the aesthetic connection that links these two seemingly disparate entities together. The color springs geographically from the same place, whether as pearl or as oil. This is the color of wealth production in the Gulf. Its name is dichroic color. This is the color that should represent our continuity of history, pre and post oil, and the color that signals our advance into a future without oil. In the early 1970s, a wandering British museum named David Fanshawe passed by the island of Bahrain. With his own eyes, he saw how the culture of the pearl divers was dying. At this critical junction of history, he decided to create a tribute to the divers by recording their songs alongside himself banging on nearby oil pipes. The sound of the oil pipes covered with the voices of the divers portrays the first contact between the intruder and the divers. Perhaps this is the only music that accurately portrays our history here. Oh, how I wish one day a national synchronized swimming team would dance to it at the future Olympics. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Amazing. We couldn't have dreamt of a better way to end the Global Art Forum. The future was. Uh, I forgot to thank uh, one important um, constituency, which is all of you. Uh, the remember, the future was all of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you have anything to add? Um, I think we should thank Antonia. Yes? Should How do you feel about that? Nah. <laughs> is she here? Antonia, are you here? No, she's not here. Yeah. You can watch on video. <laughs> no, uh, a huge round of applause, of course, to the incredible Antonia Carver, who makes all of this, all of this. possible. Antonia, thank you. And thanks to Shimon for thank, thank you. you. Whatever. For years and years. <laughs> Many more to come. So, without much further ado, please make your way to the exit. Thanks, everyone. See you next year. Bye.